All right, pre-calc students, we're getting close to the end. Um, today we are going to focus on parabolas. All right, now, I know, we did parabolas way back when. They're quadratics. Um, we're going to kind of look at them look at them with a new lens. And in this idea of conic sections, we've always been talking about these objects that are a set of all points in a plane, right? So a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant, equidistant to a fixed point. It's just one fixed point. So hopefully you're okay with me calling this a focus to a fixed point and a line. And this is new. This is called the directrix. All right, so I know, kind of goofy, right? I, I don't want to spend a ton of time, but like this is really where parabolas come from. All right, this is really where parabolas come from, this concept we just kind of learn an easier way to think about it uh, so that you can use it earlier on in math. All right, so uh, some review, and this whole first page should look pretty familiar, I hope. Uh, maybe not this, but we'll get, we'll get there. Um, we know that if we have y equals x squared, well, my, my coefficient of x is positive, which means we're going up. Or if I'm negative, I would go down. Now, hopefully you guys remember, this is from way, way, way back when. If, if we have x equals y squared, it actually opens to the right. So, of course, then our negative y squared would be going to the left or something like that. All right. This is from, like, I, I think our very first chapter. We had some parabolas that were opening left and right. All right. Now as we do a couple of examples, notice everything's kind of split, right? Um, we have kind of, on the left side, we have what we consider like our normal parabolas, where it's y equals, and then we are going to do one over here where it's an x equals, just to kind of talk about it. So, let's think about this. Um, one thing I am going to do, just to kind of get us ready, everything in this chapter so far, when we do standard form, We've always had the value with the y, right? Like I know, I know. Um, back in chapter two, we talked about how our h and our k value were over here. Well, I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to move that two over because now this looks a little more, I don't know, similar to what we've been doing the last week or so where I can now see what number is with y, I can see what number is with x, so I know that my vertex is going to be at 3, 2. Because our a value is positive, I know that this is going to open up, and this is where I now can use my a value, my growth pattern, or my a value and my growth pattern, excuse me, to kind of figure out how to graph this guy. All right, now remember, this is a vertical... Ooh, it's a shrink. It's a vertical shrink of one half. So, what would we do? We would go one, 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 three, one, five, one, seven. All right, hopefully we remember this. The only difference, though, is that I have to take into consideration this shrink. So I'm going to actually have half, three halves, five halves, seven halves and now we could go so I plot my vertex it's at 3 2 and now I'm going over one up a half over another one up three halves over another one up five halves and I think I do have enough yep I got enough space to plot that last one so I now have a parabola so that should be pretty similar to what we did way back when the next one was really not that bad. We just have to notice what, well, my x and my y kind of flipped spots. All right. So now, 
and I'd say it's already in it's already kind of in standard form. So I'm going to say my vertex is at 2 comma 3. And this one has a negative a value. So a couple things. First of all, we have to remember that because it is y squared, this is going to be left or right. And we have to know because it's negative, it's actually going to be left. Now it's a negative 1, all right? So it's going to be a normal growth pattern. It's going to be 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 7. The difference here now, though, guys, is am I going up by half or up by 1, 3, 5, 7? No, I actually have to go left. All right? And that means that these are actually up and down, which is kind of goofy to think about. So there's a couple of ways to do this. You can actually, so once we plot our vertex, 2 comma 3, you can go up 1, left 1, up 1, left 3, up 1, left 5. That's for one half. The other option, if you feel more com comfortable doing it, and I, I, I think it's pretty, I think it's a little easier, is to actually turn your paper. If you turn your paper, then it's just a normal growth pattern, and then it's still just 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, something like that. All right, so multiple options here. You can use a normal growth pattern by turning your paper, or you can kind of just think about what these words, these words are going to be a little different than before. Okay? But either way, you get your left opening parabola. All right? Okay. So... That was a good review. And now we need to just kind of rewrite our standard form. All right, if we're opening up or down, that means that the x is going to be squared. So we're going to have, oh, I don't need parentheses. I need y minus k equals a x minus h squared. All right. So we would have to get it in standard form. Maybe we would draw in our parabola. Let's say it's going up and down. And then here is where we put our conic spin on it. All right. Our conic spin is that there are two, well, actually three other, two other things that we need to for sure put on. And we're actually going to do a third just to kind of keep in mind something, an idea that we already know. But we have to put in our focus and our directrix. Now if you go back to the definition, it said that we need points to be equidistant to both the focus and the directrix. So the easiest way to think about this is this, this home point, this vertex. If it has to be equidistant, then I'm going to put my focus somewhere like right here. And I need this distance to be the exact same as the distance from the vertex to the directrix. All right, so something like this. And now I know what my directrix is, or where my directrix is. Again, hopefully you guys see that. This distance and this distance must be equal. So they're equidistant. And actually, what we do is we call that the letter P. All right, so now we have that. Um, things to keep in mind, when we're op opening up and down, our directrix is always going to be a horizontal line, or y equals directrix. All right. The last thing I do want you to draw in and, or sketch in, we're still going to want to know that this is a line of symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to put that in, and I'm going to say, well, we know that x is equal to the line of symmetry here. Well, let's do the exact same thing, but for something that opens left to right. We know that if it's opening left and right, then it's the y term that's going to be squared. So we're going to have x minus h is equal to a y minus k squared. So again, I could sketch that in, something like this. And once again, I know with my conic spin, or this whole idea of conics now, that it has to be equidistant, I could put in a focus, and I can put in a directrix. Now in this case, please be careful. Now, because this is a vertical line, my directrix is going to be x equals. 
and my line of symmetry will be a y equals. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So Mr. Rabins, how are we going to get the focus in the directrix? Well, there's a formula, and it's actually not too bad. Um, it's going to be that p is equal to 1 over 4a. So once you have that a value from the equation, you just plug it in and you can get the p value. Now please remember, p value gets you, again, from the vertex, if you go p either up or down, it will get you to both the focus and the directrix. Or left, right, my bad, excuse me. Okay. So we know that if we have a positive p-value, um, we're going to open either up or to the right, all right, because you always get the vertex by adding p. And if you have a negative, well, then you're going to go down or left. All right. So we're probably only going to do two of the next three problems just because I feel like I'm already talking too much. Um, but yeah, I want to see how you, I want you guys to see how this works so that you feel fairly confident in your abilities for our Connex test that is coming up. So if we take a look, we want to graph the following parabola, focus directrix. First things first, I know that because this is y squared, it's going to be a left or right. And I can further say that because it's negative, I know it's going to open to the left. All right. I also can write the vertex out already. It has to be at 2, negative 1. All right. Um, let's actually keep going with the list of information. I think that might be a good idea before we graph. If we want our p-value, we have to remember to get p, you just do 1 over 4a. So 1 over 4 times negative 1 half. Well, this simplifies. This would be 1 over negative 2 or negative 1 half. So now we have the p-value. Um, at this point, you know, actually, maybe I do want to graph this just so we understand um, that we need to really work off the vertex to get the focus in directrix and line of symmetry. All right, so let's go ahead and plot this parabola. It's at 2, negative 1. Um, I know that the growth pattern is going to be, or I, I guess I should say, I have a vertical shrink of 1 half. Now, you have multiple ways to think about this again. Um, if you want, you can make your list. Oops, sorry. We go 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 5, 7. But we need to remember what? With the vertical shrink, it's actually 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves. And then this is where you get to make up your mind, okay? You can either just understand that because this is going opening to the left, well then this is actually left and this is up and down, or you can turn your paper. And I think I'm going to turn my paper on this one, and I'm going to say, well I'm going over one up a half, over one up three halves, over one up five halves, and that's the last thing that I can plot. So something like that. All right. The last thing we have to do is we have to put on our focus and directrix, and it's really nice because we have the p-value. We know that p is one-half, so we know that the focus is going to be one-half to the left of the vertex, and our directrix is going to be one-half to the right. So now we actually need to write in the point. The focus then, if our vertex was at 2, negative 1, well then this is actually going to be at 3 halves, negative 1. How did I get it? I just took away half from the x. And then my directrix, vertical line, x equals, and now I just need to add half, or 5 halves. 
Last thing, I know I didn't sketch it in yet, I can put it in right now, right? We ha also have our line of symmetry. Our line of symmetry should have, oh, it's horizontal, so we have y equals, and that's just that negative 1. All right? So again, we got we need to get the p value so that we can plot the focus in the directrix. Other than that, it's pretty similar to what we've already done earlier in the year. All right, so our last example that we're going to do. Our last example up at the top is one where we do need to complete the square. Now, there's only one squared term, right? So we only have to complete the square one time. What I want you to kind of think about, though, is if we kind of look at our standard form, well, I just need to get that squared term into a, into a perfect square trinomial. So in this case, it's a little bit different. We're actually going to move everything away from the x pieces, or the x terms, I should say, excuse me. All right, so in this situation, I am actually going to have x squared plus 8x, and then I'm already going to put in my blank because I know I'm going to need it. But this is going to be equal to negative 12y plus 8 plus blank. So what happens here? I'm going to have to take half and square, so 16, 16. All right, um, so I know that this is going to be x plus 4 squared. This is good. I know I have negative 12y plus 24. OK, now let's think about this. We know, again, look, when we look at the standard form, the coefficient of the left side must be a 1, right? It's y minus k, or just x minus h. So what we need to do, guys, is we need to divide absolutely everything by this negative 12, negative 12, negative 12. When we do that, now I'm going to do this a little bit in goofy order. When I divide this piece by negative 12, I'm going to just get a y. And then when I do 24 divided by negative 12, I get negative 2. And now this is where I get my a value. Remember, this is like 1 over negative 12, right? So that is... I shouldn't put that, I should put it like that, sorry. So I have negative 1 12th as my a value, x plus 4 squared. All right, again, move everything to the other side, complete the square as normal, and then make sure you get that coefficient to be a 1 so that we're in standard form. So now I know that I have a vertex at negative 4 comma 2. Sorry, I'm covering that up. Hopefully you guys see that, negative 4 and 2. I know that this is going to either open up or down because it's x squared. And I'm actually going to say it's going to be down because it's a negative coefficient. So this is going to open down. We know our formula now for p is always 1 over 4a. So 1 over negative, or sorry, 1 over 4 times negative 1 12th. Well, we can clean this up. 4 times negative 1 12th is, it's either negative 4 twelfths, or I'm going to reduce that to negative 1 third. And then hopefully we remember, I don't like dividing by a fraction. I like to multiply by the reciprocal. So this is actually just negative 3. All right. Now that I have that, I think it's time to go graph this guy. So negative 4 comma 2 is our vertex. Very good. Um, we know we're going to use our pattern. 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 7. Ooh, we have a really nasty uh, vertical stretch here, or shrink, excuse me. 1 twelfth. Ugh. So we know 1 twelfth, 3 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 7 twelfths. Okay. I know that these aren't the prettiest numbers, but I do expect you to be able to kind of think through this, right? Like, 1 twelfth, another 3 twelfths. Okay, so, like, let's let's do these first points first. 1 twelfth is going to barely go down at all, right? Something like that. Well, I know that I would have to go down another 3 twelfths, right? So that would be about 
one third, right? Because one plus three is four. Four, four divided by twelve is one third. So I know that I should be right about a third on that next one. So that means my first one was even worse. And I keep going, right? You just do the best you can. About five twelfths. And let's think here. One twelfth, four twelfths, nine twelfths, plus seven twelfths is sixteen twelfths. And sixteen twelfths is about one and a third. All right. So the the moral of the story is when you have a nasty vertical stretch, you just do the best you can, and it should be a, a very kind of wide opening parabola, something like that. All right. Well, now we can plot our focus. Our focus is going to be three units away. Sorry, focus and direction are both three units away from the vertex. So I'm going to go three down and then three up for my directrix. Please keep in mind the directrix, directrix should always be outside of the parabola. The focus should always be inside the parabola, uh, similar to most of our other conics that we've been working on. So our focus, if I'm at negative 4, 2, then I'm going to be at negative 4, negative 1, and then I have to go 3 up for my directrix, so negative 4, 5. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? That's terrible of me. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> y equals 5. Wow. Hopefully we're okay with that. All I did was I added 3 to my y value. Lastly, my line of symmetry goes right through everything. And that should just be, it's a vertical, so it's x equals, and then whatever that x value was, so negative 4. Now, to kind of just drive home this fact before, before you take off, stop paying attention, um, I want you to understand like what this really means. All right, this whole idea of it being equidistant. Well, equidistant means it should be the same distance, right? So if I pick any point on this parabola, maybe say, let's use one that I actually use, like this one right here. Okay. Well, when I sketch or draw in the line from the point to the focus, and when I draw in the line from that point to the directrix, these lines must be congruent, right? Equidistant. And that works for absolutely any point on this parabola, right? I could use this point, a point over here, anywhere, all right? So that's the whole idea. That's why we're doing this, because now we have another way to define a parabola. It's the set of all points that are equidistant to both the focus and the directrix. All right, so there you have it. Um, we might, depending on how you guys are feeling, we might warm up with this one in class. Um, or if you want, you can try it on your own just to kind of see how you're doing. All right, have a great day. Later. Peace.